Good evening and welcome to Worship with Messiah Lutheran Church in Amherst, New Hampshire. We are pleased and blessed that you are here and we hope and pray that you will be blessed by this service as well. The worship experience you are about to have is inspired by the worship of the Tizé community in France. If you'd like to learn more about this community, you can at www.tizé.fr or you can go to Facebook and look up Tizé. Our candle background is licensed by iStock.com. Our prayers and our music are provided by and licensed through SundaysAndSeasons.com and One License. We are grateful for these ministry partners. Veni Sancte Spiritus 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 Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus. 
Let us pray. Into your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves, receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps, abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves, take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. As has been our practice, uh, we are going to reflect on a Christian symbol at this time. I will show the symbol to you and give you some time just to drink it in to reflect on it, to see what it might say to you this evening, and then we'll have a brief reflection about the symbol itself and then return to another time of silence. Uh, please uh, just quiet your mind and prepare yourself to spend a little time reflecting on the symbol. This symbol is a mosaic that's found in the Church of the Multiplication, is the short name of the church. The longer name is the Church of the Multiplication of the Loaves and Fish. It is located in the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. Um, and it is, of course, a, a church that commemorates the 
miraculous feeding of the 5,000, which was last Sunday's gospel text. Um, you can go and see it to this day. Uh, it, it, there's a modern day structure that was opened up in, in the 1980s, uh, but it sits atop two churches, one that was built in the fourth century and one that was later built in the fifth century where the mosaics were, were put in there. And if, as you go, uh, it's dusty, it's hard to see the mosaic, but if you take a little water and you missed it, uh, the colors just pop right out at you. And this is a very familiar uh, mosaic. You can find it just about everywhere. As an example of the ubiquity of the loaves and fishes mosaic, here are a couple examples from our trip to the Holy Land when I was in seminary. One of the things you'll notice when you go to the Holy Land is a remarkable amount of, of marketing and kind of questionable things that get made. We saw um, six-foot glow-in-the-dark rosaries. Uh, we, we saw just, just some ghastly things, smiley face yarmulkes, and, and just all manner of, of odd thing that just it doesn't quite feel right. And so we had a contest to see who could find the, uh, the tackiest or, or the most kind of obnoxious things as, as just a way to process it, to name what was around us and to maybe put it aside. And so I took it upon myself to start gathering Tabga things. And, and here's a couple of my prizes. One is the Tabga toenail clipper on the left. And on the right, of course, is a shot glass with the Tabga loaves and fishes. So uh, they are everywhere, these things. You can find them wherever you might. I wonder why this image speaks to people so much that it just seems to show up all over the place. But as I said previously, um, the loaves and fishes uh, is, is clearly connected to the, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, the feeding of the 5,000. There's also, of course, the feeding of the 4,000. The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle of Jesus that shows up in all four of the Gospels, the, the three synoptics and the Gospel of John as well. And this mosaic represents that, the two fish, and the loaves are the lunch of the little boy. And if you remember the biblical account, there are two fish and there are five loaves. Yet if you look carefully at this mosaic, there are only four loaves. One, two, three, four. The placement of this mosaic is underneath uh, the altar at the church. And the thought that many have had is that the fifth loaf would be the 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 loaf that is part of the communion, the Eucharist, and that in having communion, it is as if we are being a part of the feeding of the 5,000, that Jesus is feeding us himself with that fifth loaf. When you read the account of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus' blessing and breaking and distributing the loaves and the fishes certainly harkens back to communion for us as well. So that is an important part of this mosaic. So what is it? that you think is the uh, reason that this loaves and this fish is this story in the Bible that shows up four different times, this, this miracle of Jesus that's portrayed in this mosaic that just seems to resonate with people. Why does that catch people's attention so much? Um, maybe it's a fact that we all long for things. We all long to have our needs met and satisfied. And this is a story about people being hungry and, and uh, like sheep without a shepherd, and Jesus sees their needs and, and they're met. And there's room for everyone at the table, and there's an abundance, and there's more than enough to go around that the 12 disciples pick up 12 baskets full of loaves and, and fish. Maybe it's a story that, that's powerful because it shows Jesus having strong compassion. The word in the, the Greek is splognizomai, and literally means being stirred in the bowels. He looked at the crowd and had a deep compassion for them. And he wasn't willing to let them be without caring for them. Even though the disciples wanted to hurry them off, uh, Jesus spent the time with them. Maybe that's what resonates with us. Um, there's just something visceral about a story with bread and with fish and, and with all these people being fed. And there's certainly resonances with the communion as Jesus breaks the bread and gives thanks and, and, and passes it around. Uh, we can't help but hear communion in that as well. What other things do you think uh, make this, this miracle, this story, this account so appealing, so engaging, uh, so transcendent? I invite you to spend some time. Uh, as we close out this time and return to silence 
with a chance for you to meditate on these things and see what God might say to you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
to your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let us pray. O oh God, you've called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Messiah Virtual Choir, which you heard during our Tizay pieces tonight, will be meeting in our Zoom room after worship if you'd like to join us. The meeting ID is here on the screen, or you can go to www.messiahnh.org and follow the link there, or you can go to www.tinyurl.com slash messiahnhzoom and get into the room that way. We would love to have you join us. We are going to begin a weekly Bible study starting on Thursday, August 6th. It will have two sessions, one in the morning at 9 a.m., one in the evening at 7.30 p.m. You can come to either of them or both if you really want to. Uh, it will be in the church Zoom room, and we hope you will join us. Thank you. Our next worship service will be this Sunday, August 9th, for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We hope you'll join us. It will be at 9.30, and we are welcome to be with us and join us for the virtual coffee hour afterwards. Thank you. Have a blessed night. Good night. Thank you for being with us. Go and be a blessing.